Hello, this is Gary. This is Gary from the Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary. And today I'm in the, the new reception area. And I've got a film here that you might like to see. Uh, this is something that we had on a permanent loop here. And I think you'd be very interested. There's actually no sound with it, but I'll just shut up so you can watch this.
My thanks to Sue, our receptionist, for digging that out of the archives. Doors are tied with bows. A very festive look. And the grounds, which were so beautiful in Harry Edwards' time, still are. But unfortunately, the rain is coming down at the moment, so. And the lovely picture of Burroughs Lee. The old reception area. through the windows. <laughs> Unfortunately, the use hardly piercing through the gloom. This is the Sun Terrace. Containing some of the sculptures that were here before Harry Edwards' time. to the chapel. The chapel has been prepared today for a volunteer's carol service. So there's some lecterns set up. Christmas tree. And a picture, of course, of Harry Edwards' spirit guides, Louis Pasteur, and Lord Lister. A lovely study of Harry.
come back to sit just before his chair. Looking at the table and of course the sanctuary symbol. So if we just start the healing minute, we give thanks that we're gathered together in this place and we ask that this place be filled with love, light, friendship and healing energies. Surround us in protection as we open our hearts and expand our consciousness to allow the flow of love and healing to come through us. As your crown chakra opens, you feel or imagine a column of pure white light filling your body. Then feel the balance and harmony within your body as the earth energy rises up through the soles of your feet and your base chakra. You feel your connection to the universal source of pure unconditional love, balanced by the nurturing protective love of Mother Earth. And Harry Edwards' prayer May I be thankful for all the blessings I already have. Grant me relief from pain and sickness. Protect me from all ills and grant me good health in the days to come. Remove all causes of imperfection and bring your healing ministers close to me so that I may be conscious of their presence and receive guidance and inspiration. Grant me courage and fortitude to overcome all adversity let me be conscious of your strength in all times of need. Grant me confidence to overcome my fears and not to anticipate harm. Teach me how to live rightly in your sight, to do only that which is right and true. I pray the good guidance and right influencing will inspire all your peoples to be as brothers one to the other and that peace shall endure for all time. We ask now that all the people whose names we hold in the distant healing folder may receive healing for the highest good. We also request healing for their family, friends, and people for whom they have requested distant healing. May they be placed in the healing light and receive that which they are allowed to receive for the highest good. Please join me now in a minute's silence when we can send our own healing thoughts and prayers to our friends and loved ones who aren't well at this time. And as always, please remember the animal kingdom.
our thanks and blessings for your help here today and to our friends in spirit. Amen. I've taken my reading today from a book by Jonathan Wittenberg, Things My Dog Has Taught Me. Without the dogs, Nicky and I wouldn't have gone out at four o'clock one May morning in Wales when Sappy was old and Mitzpah, our other dog, so young, he'd woken us by messing on the floor. And after cleaning up, we put on our boots and taken the puppy and watched the dawn transform the steep dark fields into sparkling green and listened to the birds and the calls of the lambs and returned an hour later refreshed and rejoicing because life itself had blessed us and gone back to sleep with the dogs at rest on the floor. Without those dogs, I wouldn't have reached wearily for my anorak at a quarter to midnight and headed through the early autumn cold for the heath. We were releasing Mitzpah from the lead. I would watch my tiredness evaporate like the mist from my breath and feel as I followed a run at a run, the dog's disappearing tail, what a joy it was to be alive and stopping to watch a hedgehog crawl through the grass and inhaling the deep air beneath the trees. I understood how deeply vibrant all this living world is. Without the dogs, I wouldn't have been so aware of the frightening swiftness of the passage of time. I wouldn't have observed with an anxious heart how summer by summer Safi's hips were getting weaker, or felt with such fear the steady irreversible encroachment of mortality on the puppy young boisterousness of our championship. I wouldn't have been marked so intensely watching the dog years flow irreversibly through the hourglass, or been rendered so vulnerable by the irreversible preciousness of the days. I wouldn't have blessed each tail wagging morning I've measured out my life by the way my dog runs, tugs, walks, begins to limp, becomes more pronouncedly halt. Is this his final summer? Our last summer together? I see Mitzpah and the children playing together on the beach in the last red glimmer of the western twilight across the blackening water. I watch them slowly turn into shadows moving in the gentle tide, fading with everything visible into the all-embracing dark and turn away and weep. And I know I must not waste it, this fragile gift of fleeting time for wonder, companionship and love. Thank you to Jonathan Wittenberg and their feelings, I think, all pet owners, all pet owners share. Right. I wish you a very good day and I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day and I hope you all have a good week. Take care and I'll see you all next week. Bye-bye.